Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video, we did the RFID module, which was um, uh, very stressful to be honest with you. I mean, we ended up figuring it out in the end. So if you haven't watched that video, you can go back and watch that. The code for that is also on my GitHub as well. So now we're moving on to the LCD display, which is pretty much essential for any project, right? You want to have, you know, a display of some sort to tell you something, right? So uh, you're not you're not going to want to be connecting your Arduino to a serial monitor every time. So yeah, this should be pretty much essential to be used. And the good thing is we're all reaching pretty much the end of these tutorials now. Uh, this part anyway is part two. Okay, so let's have a look here. Overview. In this lesson, you will learn how to wire up an alphanumeric LCD display. Display has an LED backlight and can display two rows with up to 16 characters on each row. Okay, so 32 characters in total. You can see the rectangles for each character on the display and the pixels that make up each character. Display is just white and blue and is intended for showing text. So we're going to use a breadboard, a potentiometer. Interesting, I wonder why we're using a potentiometer. Maybe to adjust brightness, I don't know. Uh, the LCD display, the Uno R3, and then 16 wires. Okay, mill to mill. So the LCD pin has different pins. Uh, for, it's got eight pins in total, and this is what they do. You guys can read that in your own time. Okay, so here's the schematic. We've got 3.3 volts, which is being connected to a potentiometer, which is also going to VDD, which is also going to pin A on the LCD. Okay, so don't worry about the schematic anyways. It's not essential for what we're trying to do. We just got to follow the wiring diagram. Okay, so here's the wiring diagram. The LCD display needs six Arduino pins, all set to be digital outputs. Okay, it also needs five volts and ground. I was wondering that because it says it needs five volts, but you can see here on the schematic, they connected it 3.3 volts, so interesting. There are a number of connections to be made. Lining up the display with the top of the breadboard helps to identify its pins without too much counting. Especially if the breadboard has its rows numbered with row 1 as a top row of the board. Do not forget the long yellow lead that links the slider of the pot. So by pot here they mean potentiometer. Do not forget the long yellow lead that links the slider of the pot to pin 3 of the display. The pot is used to control the contrast of the display. Okay. So not brightness but basically the same thing, contrast instead. You may find that your display is supplied without header pins attached to it. If so, the instructions, all of the instructions in lesson 3.1. So you're going to have to what, solder on the pins. Okay, so let's let's build our uh, breadboard circuit now. Okay, so here's our LCD display. It looks like it does come with the pins attached. Nice. And soldered on already. Do we have a peel on the screen? That we might do. It doesn't love a good peel. Hopefully that was satisfying for some of you. Okay, so I, I'm not a fan of this this actual breadboard that they ship with. My other breadboards are a lot easier to use. I can't push this in. But I'm going to... I'll use this breadboard because this is the one that they ship with it. So if you have this kit, then, you know, you're probably experiencing what I'm experiencing. But yeah, this this sucks. It's The pins the inside, there's not enough space. But I've got it about here. Oh man, look at that, it's actually, there we go, cool, we did it, alright, so that's in, okay, so it looks like all of the ground pins, you can see all of the ground and uh, VCC pins are being connected to the rails, and then those are being connected to the Arduino, so let's, I suppose, let's do that first, let's do our ground connection, so we've got ground, which ground are they using? Uh, they, they're, okay, so they've got the Arduino this way. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way you hold the Arduino. I'm just doing it because I want you guys to see, especially for beginners. The ground. The ground. It might. So, currently, I'm having this problem whereby, you know, my Arduino, because of the uh, USB, it just wants to, like, slide around, so... In that instance, best thing to do is just get some blue tack and then there you go. That's the way to go. Okay, so we've done ground. Let's do five volts to so just check in. So the wiring diagram also says five volts as well, which is interesting. 
Okay, so we've got ground and five volts there. All right, so now let's do ground rail, and then we want to go to our first pin. It's here. It's actually our, it's actually our last pin, isn't it? All right, let's do our next ground. Okay, I'm struggling to see. All right, here we go, much better. Okay, so we've got one ground there, and then we've got one more ground which goes directly to this pin here, which is the last pin over here. So this is grounded as well. Okay. Now we have a potentiometer which we need to ground and supply. So the potentiometer is in here, and you can see it. That's the potentiometer there. It's got the little handle. You stick it in there so you can twist it and adjust it. Okay, so I'm gonna I've attached the knob to the potentiometer, and then now this needs to go. Um. Okay, the scaling of the wind diagram is a bit off. So that's the last pin which is grounded, and the potentiometer is going like they've put it just put it basically over here to the right, basically in like that. That in, I mean that that does not fill in at all. Okay. Ugh, I mean you're basically forcing these things into the breadboard. Okay, so that's in now. So then we power it to the power rail. I'm just putting them over to this side so I can have some space to work with. And then we ground the other side. Here, ground. Okay, then they've actually been cheeky. They've used like this yellow line here. They've used one of these, um, one of these flat things. So if you have them, use them. It's easier than using all these big wires. But I'll just use the jumper cables. And you can see what these cheap breadboards uh, do. Like you can see where the pins get bent from using them. That's fine. Okay, so. The output of the potentiometer, which is the middle pin there, we're then connecting that, and we're connecting that to the third pin across. So one, two, three, which is a uh, looks like AO or VO, VO, VSS, VDD, and then VO. So connect that in there. Okay, let's follow the schematic, the wiring diamond exactly, and put it one down. There you go. Okay, so we grounded the first pin. The second pin we haven't done yet. That second pin is being supplied to VCC. So we'll use, okay, so pin in there, connect that to VCC. This blue tack has done wonders. Look at that. It just is holding the whole thing together nicely. All right, then we've got a green cable now, which is for the fourth. Pin. Try to use the short wires when you're building the circuit. So, fourth pin. So, we've got one, two, three, four. And this is, I assume, going to go to one of the digital. So this is going to digital seven. There we go. Next up, we've got the next pin across black going to ground. So, next pin that's going to ground. You see, that's the reason why I've moved them, you know, have them coming across this way so I can have room to work with. Uh, then we've got an orange pin and orange, I keep saying pin, orange cable. That's going to the next pin across and it's going to digital eight. Wow. Okay. So we're not using a bunch of pins. All right. This is going to get a bit tricky. So we've grounded this pin here. So let's power the next pin across. So now I'm doing this connection here. So we're going right next to Grounded pin, so the second to last pin. Oops, I had to knock out some stuff. This is where, if you use these, well, where's what I was just talking about? If you use these things, you'd have no problem. You know, everything would just be flat. But like here, like this, it looks a lot more old school. If you if you ever studied history of electronics, you see the old breadboards with huge wires and spinning. So it it looks better, like more. 
Instagrammable, I suppose. But it's just a pain in the neck to work with. All right, so we're powering this rail here. Oh, our LCD is turned on. Nice. Oh, look, there's a huge uh, light there. LED. Okay, so it's flashing right now. I think it was this cable that was up. Okay, and then we've got four blue pins all next to this one, which are all going to 12, 11, 10, and 9. Got this one, and that's going to 12. I don't have a good connection somewhere. Some My LC is flashing like crazy. Okay, and then next to that, that's going to 11. Oh, this is becoming difficult. Okay, and then next to that, so we've done two, we've got two more. That, and that's going to 10. It's going to be a tight one now. Okay. And finally, I'll do this one to nine. Go in here first. The nine, and that's going over here. The the next one. Cool. And we're done. Took a while, but we got there, huh? Nice. I'm happy with that. Okay. So I suppose now, uh, just checking my connections here. The issue when you're doing these longer ones is these longer uh, breadboards is that. You can always knock something off at the end, which is very frustrating. I mean, I'm particularly concerned with the, f the screen flickering, but okay. So now let's go do a bit about the code. I assume it's just going to be a simple upload. So after wiring, please open the program in the code folder, hello world, and click upload. Uh, before you can run this, make sure you've installed Liquid Crystal Library. Look at that, they've actually taken the time here. The first thing to know the sketch line is include liquid, liquid crystal. This tells you Arduino. So what happened? Why did you wait until the end of the tutorials to start teaching us about how the code works? Come on, guys, man. Okay, so hello world. Hello world. I'm assuming I'm going to have the library already installed, so I'm just going to hit upload. If it doesn't work, then I'll come back and install the library. Okay, so let's hit upload. I like the fact that there's a lot of comments this time as well. It's nice. Looks like it's working. Okay, nothing yet. So my LC is kind of flickering. Okay, so I'm thinking it might be due to my potentiometer. So let's rotate it. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I was wondering, I was thinking to myself, why would it not work? So I don't know why it's been done this way, but obviously you can see it's upside down. I'm not sure why the wiring diagram told us to do it this way, but okay, let's just readjust our Arduino and stuff. Okay, there you go. So it's printing Hello World and it's got a counter. Um, so let's read this code. The sketch prints Hello World to the LCD and shows the time, meaning the time elapsed. I can't really see it. Let's just adjust this. There you go. Hello World. Nice, man. Look at that. That's brilliant. All right, so let's take a look at this code. I'm hoping it's nice and simple. So we've got a, a string here, which we're printing. So we can say, hello, YouTube, and then hit upload. Okay, so interesting. We've got the lcd.begin 16.2. Okay, set up the lcd's number of columns and rows. All right, interesting. So we've got 16 columns and two rows. That's what this is doing here. So if I set this to one, one row, Will it turn off the whole bottom row? Okay. It's turned off the whole bottom row and it's now printing the loop on the top row. So that's not good. Put that two again. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that perhaps if I, I let's see if I can just run a loop of different strings. So let's common out. Okay, so let's just take a look at this loop code. Set the cursor to column zero, line one. Okay, note line one is the second row since counting begins with zero. Yep. Just set cursor, then print here. Okay. Column zero. Okay. So what if when I start the code, because on our setup we're printing hello YouTube, okay? So then if I do a delay of 1,000 seconds, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Let's try to be a little bit daring with this code. Okay, and then so... We're going to go int i is equal, no, not do that. Um, let's set the cursor to zero and then let's 
common out this time, which is printing the time. So that's just using a nice function to print the time there. Nice and easy. Okay, so now we're on the we're on this top row here, the Hello YouTube row. So let's do uh I'm Hamid. Um okay. And then to the second row. So what's it? Uh first column, second row. This bit, and then let's go. I study Jupiter. Alright, let's just see if that works for now. So I'm expecting hello YouTube, then a one second delay. I'm Hamid. And it's got so you have to blank out the rest of the the rest of the um these uh whatever it's called columns, right? So if I space, 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 and then do it again, upload. Hello YouTube, I'm Hamid, and it's still printing that. One, two, so two more spaces. Upload again. Hello YouTube, I'm Hamid, I study EE. Okay, so it works. I mean, I obviously, the limitation is not this, it's me, right? I, I don't really know what I'm doing in terms of coding. But I can, I can see I can control now what I'm printing on. So if I wanted to just loop through a bunch of different stuff, could I just do delay two seconds? Um, keep forgetting about my semicolons. Okay, and then can I then do like this again and say, please subscribe. I don't know if that's enough characters or not. And then, and like, okay. Let's see if that works. So I'm expecting, hello YouTube for one second, then I'm Hamid, I study EE. Hello YouTube, I study EE. And then please subscribe and like. <laughs> and let's just do a little delay there. Delay uh, 2000. And let's increase this delay at the top here of the Hello YouTube. There we go. Hello YouTube. I'm Hamid, I study Triple E. Please subscribe and like. Nice. Look at that. That's amazing, right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so I'm pretty much almost done now with these tutorials, I think. So that was the LCD display. That's lesson 21. We've got the eight LED one, which we've kind of already done. So I might try and touch on that. Then we've got DC motors, stepper motor, and EEP ROM. So basically three, four lessons to go. So yeah, very happy with this. All right, guys, if you enjoyed it, follow what's on the, the, uh, the LCD display, please. See you in the next one.